So I've just finished reading this really great book called The Lathe of Heaven. It's described as a sci-fi book, but I'd call it more of a magical realism, dystopian kind of book. And I don't want to tell you what it's about. I don't want to spoil anything, but I really think you should read it. But the one thing I will say about it is it's all about dreams. And I think this cover is not the best for conveying that. Now, I've looked at other editions of this book with different covers. They all just don't really inspire me. They don't make me think that this is what the book is going to be about. So today I'm just having a go at redesigning this. I've always wanted to have a go at designing book covers. My day job is a UX designer, so I design apps and websites, but I've never really done that much graphic design or illustration. So I'm just going to have a go and see what I come up with. And here's the catch. I'm only going to give myself an hour to do this. And that includes inspiration, collecting ideas, time. So I'm going to start the clock now and I'll see you in about an hour. And I should say before we jump into this that hi, I'm Parvin. I'm a design educator from London and I make videos on how to become a better designer. If that sounds like it interests you, I'd love if you hit subscribe and follow along on the journey. Now let's head to a bookshop. So I'm just popping out and we're going to take a look at some books to get a bit of inspiration. So I'm back and I've dropped some covers that I really like in this file and I'm just going to quickly go through them working out something I like and something I don't like from all of them. So this first one, Big Swiss, I love the big type. I love that it's kind of embossed and coming off the page even though it's paperback. But yeah, mostly just love how bold and loud it is. And I think it's something to do with dogs. Tomb Guardians, I really like this. I actually, when I took this photo and look, looking back at it, I thought this was an extract of the book. There are some really nice books by a publishing company called And Other Stories, where the start of the very first page is started on the cover, so you get to start reading it. I also love this line art and how it kind of carries along the page and the line figure drawings. Not too sure about this white text here, I feel like there's too many typefaces going on. You go to serif and then a very light sans serif and a different sans serif and italics up here. So a bit much going on there, but I really love these kind of lines and the illustrations coming out of them and the very lengthy testimonial at the top. Lydia Davis, Our Strangers. I really like this because it's so abstract. I've got no idea what this book is about, but I really want to read it. It's got great use of colors and yeah, the rough texture of these shapes. It's very abstract and looks really cool. And a big emphasis on the author's name. Nathan Hill, Wellness. I like this one just because it has such an interesting illustration and the way the words are, this is a lovely typeface and the way they're laid out. So it kind of makes it part of this illustration. I'm not sure I'd want to do something like this for my cover, but it's a nice thing to look at. Uh, this isn't a book, this is a wine can, but I don't know, I love the starburst effect. I really love the colors here, the kind of dark teal and the bright mustard orange. Um, this is a film poster that I also dropped in here. I think there's something about this, the, the texture fading away from the head. It really reminded me of the content of the book. As I said, I'm not gonna spoil too much about the book, but it's about dreams. And there's something about this which is about a dream kind of disappearing or struggling to remember a dream. So there's something really nice here. It's a really nice treatment of a photo. Uh, this one, They by K. Dick. I think this was my favorite cover I saw today. It's got a really cool typeface, a really cool treatment of just a standard typeface but stretched out, elongated. And then the texture here is really, I don't know, there's something really nice about it. It's kind of, Illustrative, it's, I'd, I'd be interested to see how to create this because I've got an idea how to do it with masks and Photoshop, but yeah, really cool. And then obviously the publisher keeps the same color edition. We've got a very nice, simple review at the bottom. So yeah, really, really like this cover. Um, I grabbed this one off my bookshelf just because it's also a lovely cover. There's no cutout here. It's just printed, but it's designed so that it looks like a cutout. And then when you open it, there's like a window in the sun. So final three, Baumgartner by Paul Auster. I love Paul Auster as an author. I think what's interesting here is the emphasis on his name rather than the name of the book. I guess it doesn't really matter what the book is. You just know you're reading a Paul Auster book. And I think when I took this photo, I just loved how creepy it felt. Looking at it again now as a photo, it feels maybe a bit less creepy, but in the bookshop, it really, with all the colorful covers, it really stood out as this kind of dark, moody book. 
And I think that's kind of the tone of the Lathe of Heaven as well, so maybe something to copy there. A philosophy of walking, again, not sure that this is the right style for the book I want to design a cover for, but there's something really nice about this kind of woodblock style illustration and then framed by this nice italic serif font. And lastly, her body and other parties. Again, this is a really nice treatment of a photo. It's just a nice, simple stock photo. And then it's edited in a way, really simple to do, but it's really impactful. So this is what we're trying to change up. And I've just got some paper to have a go at some ideas. So this first idea, I'm thinking it's more important to know the name Ursula Le Guin. I think the name is much more important than the title of the book. I think she's more well known than the title of The Lady of Heaven. So really big type treatment up here and then maybe an image over here that is a stock image or something to do with the content, so dreams. So then for this next idea, I'm thinking similar type treatment to the book cover They, which I showed before. Um, so really long, thin text and focusing in on the word lathe. Quite an interesting word. To be honest, not really that sure how it relates to the book. Um, and then maybe some characters in this kind of, almost like a fishbowl kind of view of the world. Again, leaning into that idea of dreams coming on. So then this next idea is pulling in from a couple of ideas. One, we have that nice inspiration with the line drawing and figures kind of being made of it. And then we also had an idea of very, very big, chunky text. Um, small author name, big focus on the title of the book. I think this is still missing something, so it would definitely need something more. Maybe that could be kind of a graphic idea. Once we get into more high fidelity, we can work that out. Let's just do one more quick idea. Now I know this looks like a flower, but I'm trying to do a sunburst. There's something nice about this though that feels a bit more heavenly. So we could do something like that. So now we've got four ideas. The reason I'm doing ideas like this is just to kind of get my creative juices flowing. I like working in paper as much as possible before getting onto a screen. I'm just gonna keep going with all four of these ideas. Yeah, let's move back into Figma. So back inside Figma, I'm just gonna make some frames, roughly a book size, not worrying about it too much. And then looking at my ideas, let's start blocking it out. So I quite like this combination of sans serif and very chunky serif. So I'm just using Futura Bold and here I've got E.B. Garamond and I don't know, I think it looks quite nice. As I mentioned in the idea stage, I think it's interesting to focus on the author's name. I realised on this book it actually says Ursula K. Le Guin here and then on the back, but then inside it just says Ursula Le Guin. I played with having the LE in lowercase, but I think this blocking works quite well. I quite like this idea of it being left aligned with the image. 
I'll just make that a bit darker. And then the Lathe of Heaven left aligned again. And yeah, I wasn't expecting to like this with a, a serif and a sans serif together. Let's play a bit more. One thing I really like about EB Garamond is when you put it in italic, you get access to these really nice swashes, which just make it feel a bit more, a bit more flourishy. So just dropping this in here, these are some fonts that I have access to, which are quite nice. Nice to look at for inspiration. Quite like obviously. Let's see if we can... So actually while trying to look for my font for the next one, I realized freight text condensed is quite nice. Um, doesn't have the same swashes, but that's quite a nice option. So while going to look for this font called Obviously, I had to restart Figma, and then I also found this font called Lasso by Barrett RM Typography. Really, really nice font. Um, so did this little treatment, added a little starburst in the middle of, of Heaven to kind of match these funky serifs. And then this is just freight text compressed again, and similar here with the italics. And now I've kind of moved on to my They inspired cover, but to be honest, not loving it. I think the word lathe is just a bit of a weird word. And the way the E is open on this end just makes it feel unbalanced. So yeah, just playing around with this one a bit more. If we flip the colors, make everything inside white. And this is just a simple subtraction shape. I kind of like the half moon. Um, I don't know where it would fit. Author's name here. Yeah, just not loving it to be fair. Let's move on. What do we have next? I think these kind of wide, expanded, extended fonts, they're cool, but they kind of almost lean too much into the sci-fi vibe. And like I said, I kind of want to go for more of a dystopian, magical realism, intriguing literary fiction book rather than sci-fi because I think that pigeonholes it too much for what a great book it is. So what I'm doing now is just going in to see how thick this stroke width is. This is a nice simple sans serif called Work Sans and it is uh, five. This is almost like if you've seen Loki, which is an amazing series. This is kind of like how the timelines look while they're branching off. So here I'm just trying to get them to space up properly. You know what, I don't, I don't hate this one. I think it's kind of, there's something interesting to it. My Bezier curves are obviously a bit horrible. But yeah, there's something quite nice with that. And then this last one we said we'd have a go at a starburst. So if I do star, whack that in. This one is kind of inspired by that wine can. <laughs> Here, I've just pressed Command Shift O to outline the text, and now I'm just nudging it, giving it a bit more randomness. And this is one of my favorite handwritten fonts. It's called Caveat, or Caveat Brush is the brush version of it. It's just like a quick, easy to read scroll. Some of, some of the kerning isn't amazing, so it's nice to go in like this and tighten it up. Um, so that's another one. So just looking over these five designs, uh, this is where I'd invite you to take a look at these and think, what would you improve? What would you change? How would you do this a bit differently? I've never designed a book cover before, so this has been really fun for me. And this is what I would say is a mid fidelity stage. So started with these designs in low fidelity, put them on the screen, just done it in Figma to be nice and quick. And now I'm just gonna select one of these to move forward with. And it sounds kind of boring, but I think I'm gonna pick the first one. Like there's something really nice about this, but I can't think how to add more color to this, or I guess you could do some noisy gradients or something like that. This one I kind of like, but it feels a bit old timey with the fonts. 
This one didn't end up liking at all, and same with this last one. So I think these are my two preferred ones, but I, I'm just gonna move ahead with this one. I know it's the simplest, but I think there's something really cool with this one. So I'm gonna go look for an image to fill in the gap here. Okay, so these are the ones I've come up with. These are just images I found online. I don't have any right to use them and I'll leave some credits for the photographers in the description below. Obviously this isn't gonna be a real book. But yeah, there's some themes that I've reached into from the book to pick these images. This is from that movie poster I showed in the inspiration with that nice Photoshop effect of a person's kind of head disappearing. And like I said, the book is all about dreams. The opening line of the book is to do with jellyfishes. It starts with, current born, way flung, tugged hugely by the whole might of ocean, the jellyfish drifts in the tidal abyss. That's the opening line of the book, so quite cool to start with jellyfish. Almost a bit of a red herring because it's not really a book about jellyfishes. There's a character who is non-white in the book and that actually plays a part, so found this really nice stock photo. And lastly, the book is set in Portland, Oregon, and Mount Hood, which is a volcano you can see from Portland, features prominently in the book as well. So put in a photo of a volcano here. So just some ideas for how to lay it out. Which one do you think is best? I would love to know. Um, please do leave me a comment and tell me which one you think you like the most. And I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and seeing my process. It's been super fun to work on. Please do share it with a friend. And if you've got ideas for what you want to see more of on this channel, just let me know. Thanks for coming on this journey with me and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.